all right guys so excuse my voice i've been under the weather for the past couple of days but yeah so as you can see we got the 2018 suzuki gsxr 1000 r out for his first ride as you can see we got this nice little layout out here we um are at this little i guess it's a commercial area they got this nice little pond out here but yeah i will say that this bike that color is probably like the better color i was stuck on the white at first and then i saw this black with the gray and the blue and it really caught my eye so i'm glad i picked this one Today, we're going to give you guys the first ride on this bike and my first initial impressions. So, don't take this as, you know, my dead set um, opinion because it's not. This is just my initial impressions on this bike. And it could be bad. It could be good. We're going to go ahead and get this first ride started. And, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys at the end and give you basically a final thoughts at the end back in the garage. So, yeah, hold on. I think they got a little bench area over here. What does it say? <clears throat> Private property. No trespassing, no fishing, no swimming, no ice skating. Ice skating? I'm guessing this shit freeze over and people come out here and try to skate on it? Stupid. When I went to the dealership, I didn't go to the dealership to buy a bike. I actually went there <clears throat> to get the tires put on the BST wheels for the booster. And the wife just so happened to ask me about a scooter. Yeah, weird. She wanted a Vespa, so she wanted to go look at them. So we went upstairs, we started looking at, well, we were walking the floor looking for um, the scooters. And we walked past uh, the motorcycles and stuff. And I was just over there looking at them. <coughs> but, um,. She ended up saying that she wanted a Vespa, which was kind of weird to me because she's never said she wanted to ride anything on two wheels. So it kind of shocked me. So we looked at the Vespas. She saw ones that she liked. And um, I kind of was nudging her like, hey, you know, a Grom would probably be a better option because um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit faster. And it's more of a, a motorcycle setup than a Vespa. So if you ever want to ride it on the streets or whatever, you you probably be better off doing that and having it as a learner because it's cheaper to fix a Honda Grom than it is to fix a, a Vespa. Yeah. We all know how these European bikes, uh, bikes or anything are when it comes to fixing them. Uh, we went downstairs, we started looking at the Grom. She saw one she liked. So we grabbed the guy. And we went over, and he went over some stuff with us. And while we're walking around waiting on him to come back because um, he said it had some type of special pricing going on, um, we walked around and I started looking at the bikes. First bike that caught my eye, believe it or not, was the 2020 R1M. That is a sexy bike. Um, like probably one of the better looking bikes that I've ever seen. Only problem is, is that that bike is like $26,000. And for $26,000, I may just get another H2. Yeah, I said it. I would rather buy another H2 than to spend 25 plus on a naturally aspirated bike. 
Next bike we saw was the the one thousand Jixxer one thousands, and um, it was a uh, white and blue, and then it was this one. And then they had the twenty twenty model in the uh, Suzuki racing colors, which I'm not a fan of the Suzuki racing colors. I don't know why they just uh, just don't sit right with me. So I asked the wife which one she liked. And she said the white one, and I was, I was dead set on the white one as well. But the more I looked at the black one, the more I decided that I would prefer to have a black one than the white one. When the guy came back, gave us some prices on that, the Vespa that my wife wanted, and on the Grom. And I asked him, I was like, "Yo, so if I buy two bikes, can I get a discount?" You know, just kind of joking with him. At the time, I wasn't dead set on buying a bike. And he was like, yeah, I can make some work. I was like, cool. He asked if we wanted to do the deal. And I was like, you know what? Bring me some numbers, which I'll want for these bikes. Out the door, and then we'll talk. He started talking about, you know, everything. And they came back with some numbers that I didn't, I didn't like. And I wasn't about to pay. I told them flat out, I was like, nope, not paying that. They were trying to charge me uh, like 11 or 1200 bucks for deal of freight and prep, bro. I've never paid that much for, for deal of freight and prep. I know why they charge it, and I know what it's for, but I've never agreed with, with, with those two fees, because why are you charging me to bring a bike over here for you to sell and make a profit off of selling to me i've never understood that but i understand it's a business and they got to make money but when you blatantly slap me in the face with fees like that i get offended now the reason that they did this for the fees is because the bike was advertised at 14.99 okay i look online I see other places selling them for 12 9 I see 11 9 13 So I ask them, like, hey, can you match this 12 9 offer? And they said, yeah. So they brought the price down for that. But to try to make that up, that's where they tacked on all the, the deal of freight and prep freeze. So, again, left the dealer, told them wasn't paying the fees. Got a call the next day saying, hey, what we got to do to make this deal work? And I said, I don't want to pay those high fees. So basically what they did was um, they dropped the price. I want to say it was another uh, 800 bucks total. About 800 bucks. And that was good enough for me. But yeah. That's how we got the bike. So, my throat's getting super itchy. Doing all this freaking talking, man. I'm already halfway hoarse. But, yeah. But as far as the first ride and initial pressures go for the 1000, it seems like a pretty good bike to me. Um... As you can see right now, I'm in sixth gear. I want to look down because I know it's a bump right here. I uh, hope nobody comes through here flying too fast and hit that because it throws you for a speed wobble. And uh, steer damping on this bike sucks, man. Every time I hit a bump or the wheel thought about coming up, there, it starts to shake. So we're going to have to get that changed out. But we're in sixth gear, going about 80, and we're about 6,000 RPM. And if we pin the throttle, you can see the bike's got instant power. So, but yeah, bike's got a lot of power down low. Can't really speak for up top because obviously we've been in traffic so we can't really get on it to see what it does up top. But, I'm almost certain it's not gonna disappoint up top. It's gonna be a little 
lackluster because it's um, still restricted, but it's a good, I'm pretty sure once I unlock the ECU, it's gonna feel the same way it feels down low, it's gonna feel up top. Alright, so I'm back in the garage. Now I'm going to tell y'all my thoughts. Um, pretty much what I gathered from the ride that I just had on the bike. It wasn't a very long ride. It was a short ride. Um, after I've had the bike for some time and put a couple more miles on and stuff like that, then I give y'all my actual, you know, sort of a long-term um, view on what I think about the bike. But for now, let's just talk about the stuff that I felt on the first ride. And the biggest thing that stood out to me was the steering dampener on this bike. The steering dampener on this bike is terrible. Uh, I'm not sure if you know that's just a Suzuki thing or what, but I've never ridden a bike that I got head shake almost every time I would turn the throttle like to pin it. If the wheel even thought about coming up at all, I would get head shake. If I hit a bump going at any type of speed, you get a head shake. It wasn't like violent head shakes, just small little head shakes, but the steering depth on this bike has to go. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the quick shift and the auto blipper. The quick shift on this bike is by far one of the smoothest quick shifters I've ever felt on a bike, my R1 being a close second. On this bike, when you go to shift gears, it's buttery smooth and it's super quick. I did have issues twice during that ride where I went to go shift and the shift kind of felt lazy and that probably was me lazy shifting so i won't for now I'll just say that it was me that caused that issue the auto blipper i've never had a bike with auto blipper on it, so it's the first time i had i was still trying to rev match uh, most part but when i didn't do it and i used the auto blipper it worked fl it worked flawlessly and it was smooth as well the next thing i want to talk about is the seat the seat on this bike is one of the most comfortable seats as well that I've been on. I think that's a Suzuki thing. Um, I think all the Suzukis used to have pretty good seats on them. They're pretty thick and cushioned pad. Um, the Booster um, seat was the same way. My H2 came with a hard seat on it, not much cushion. The R1 was the same thing. So the seat on this bike is a plus for me. The next thing is the dash. Um, I'm Thankful that they upgraded from the old analog dash, but at the same time, with the way these super bikes are coming out with the color TFTs, it was no reason for Suzuki to put a dash on here that looked like you can play Pong and Frogger and all the other stuff on. The dash is literally just a, it's a black background with white letters on the R version. On the regular version, it's a white dash with black letters. Um, it's got everything on it that you need on a dash. It's got your gear indicator, got your, um, your fuel meter, RPM, speedometer, your warning lights, um, trip. Um, it's got a whole bunch of stuff on it. So it has everything you need. It's just I feel like they should have went with a color TFT on this bike. Even if it meant charging another 1500 bucks or whatever for the bike. Because in the leader bike class, this is probably the best bargain that you're going to get price-wise and for what you get in the package. Because it is one of the cheaper 1000s. And the next thing we're going to talk about is this stock exhaust. By far the ugly exhaust. Well, no, the H2 stock exhaust was pretty ugly. But, <coughs> <coughs> but this bike has one of the uglier exhausts. One, because it's so big. And I know why they're doing it. They're trying to pass Euro 4, Euro 5. And the last thing I want to talk about, and this is something that actually um, surprised me. Because... Like I said, the last leader bike that I rode that was like updated was like the 15, was the R1, the 15 R1. Um, I do have the H2, but <coughs> the, <coughs> the H2 is, but the H2 is supercharged. So that's a whole different playing field. Now you got these bikes, they have these combos now that make it so that they have more low end power and torque than their predecessors. And this bike, no matter where I was in the rear range, what gear I was in, if I turned the throttle, the power was there. It was instant. And this bike isn't even flash yet. So I can't really talk about the high-end power. 
uh, because I wasn't high enough up in the rails for long enough to even kind of give you a feedback on that. So that'll be that'll have to come at a later time. But yeah, overall, I say um, this bike is probably um, it's probably one of the better bikes in the class for what you're paying. Most of the leader bikes right now are all coming in right around uh, between 16 to 25 now. So um, for this bike, I mean, it's a 2018 model. It was brand new and getting it for, what, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 less than MSRP was uh, an easy buy. So, but yeah, guys, overall, this is an excellent bike for what it is. And it's a Suzuki. So getting parts, anything for it is going to be cheaper than most other bikes that are out right now. So I would say if you're in the market for a new bike and you're kind of on a budget or you want the best bang for your buck, this would be it. But uh, be on the lookout. We got a lot of installation videos coming for this bike because we already have a lot of parts piling up on the shelf for it. Um, we're just waiting on a couple other things and then we're going to start tearing this thing apart, getting the new parts put on. And then we're going to we have the Woolish tuning software that we're going to install as well so we can get the bike tuned. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, we ran a little long on the review because we had quite a few things we had to go over. But until next time, I will see you guys. Peace.